All right, what up YouTube? Welcome back to my Bybit Digital course, video number 13, Bitcoin trading strategy. So now that you guys have got to this point, I feel like you guys are comfortable enough to where I can actually teach you an actual trading strategy. So we're actually gonna pull up these charts and I'm gonna show you how to use RSI, Fibonacci retracements, market structure. We're gonna do a little bit of research and we're gonna see if we can't figure out what good entry and exit points are on trades. Now, if you take this strategy and you combine that with the previous video, which was Kite Crypto's risk versus reward calculator and risk versus reward strategy, you can really understand how to enter trades. And that's the key point, knowing when to enter, where to set your take profit levels at. And you want to get in, you want to get out, and you want to take your profits. It's not about buying at the absolute bottom. It's not about selling at the absolute top. It's about consistently getting in and getting out and taking money out of the game. If you guys haven't had the opportunity to watch my other videos, I have a full step-by-step -step Bybit beginner digital course. It'll teach you everything you need to know about getting set up on Bybit, practicing on their test net exchange so you don't have to risk losing your own money. Right now, they have a $20 sign-up bonus, $50 first-time deposit bonus. They're actually working on creating me my own custom reward for anybody that signs up using my affiliate link. They'll have access to a special reward they can claim. Stay tuned. That might be coming. I'm not really sure. We just talked to their team about it today. But needless to say, Bybit's the sh you got it you dig <laughs> let's go let's go guys let's have a good time let's make some money guess what i'm not a financial advisor i may have a plethora of crypto knowledge but this video is for educational and entertainment purposes only you always need to do your own research i do not advise that you buy sell hodl trade or invest in any cryptocurrency and if you could do me a huge favor and hit that like button turn on those post notifications and smash that subscribe button i would be greatly appreciative and down in the description, you can always find chapter timelines in case you want to skip ahead, affiliate links, and links to my digital course. Now that we got the YouTube police off our back, let's dive in. Let's get it. So anytime I'm looking at a chart, the first thing I want to do is I want to look at the chart on the one day time frame. And I'm going to grab my horizontal line tool and I'm going to come over here and I'm going to mark out key areas of support and resistance. So based off my previous tutorials in my digital course that just launched today, you guys will see, I taught you guys exactly how to find key support levels. So I jump out on the one day time frame, and I kind of just get a look and I kind of just get a big picture of the whole market. Where are these key support levels? Because what that key support level is going to tell me if I plan to hodl AXS and I wanted to buy in after it had a massive run up like this, I want to make sure worst case scenario, a big sell off happens. We're not sitting on a coin that looks like Shiba runs up parabolic has no support whatsoever so when the bigger players start selling off guess what happens shiba's down in one day from peak formation 46 percent. so that's what happens when a coin gets pumped when they pay market manipulators to manipulate the market and then they dump the market on everybody now axs in their hand is completely a different story and what i'm looking at here was not necessarily support but it was resistance we can see at this level right here once twice three times four times five times was able to reject price and keep price trapped below the 81 dollars price point so worst case right now i'm looking at axs at 124 dollars, 125 dollars. i'm pretty confident that worst case if the market did tank we would find support at 88 dollars. and because we rallied so fast so hard to 150 i would be very confident to say that it's going to rally up and I would be getting my money back on that one unless we went into an extended bear market winner, whatever. So now I can jump onto a three hour time frame. Just like I taught you guys, not a four hour. Why is that? Wait for it, wait for it. Who in here can drop a comment below in the live chat because this is gonna be playing in a live premiere. Who can drop a comment and tell me why I'm charting on a three hour time frame? And the winner is, I'm glad you asked, Johnny. We're charting on a three hour time frame because everybody else is charting on a four hour time frame. So what does that tell us? That tells us that we're gonna get a little leg up on the competition. If everybody else is charting on a four hour time frame, guess what? They're seeing the exact same thing you're seeing. But if you jump ahead a little bit, not much, you could do three and a half hours, three hours, two hours, two and a half hours. But I find just slightly under those bigger time frames where everybody else is on four hour, you're charting on a three hour, you're gonna see formations and patterns play out a little bit before everybody else. So let's jump in on that three hour chart. Now, when I zoom in on a three hour, what do I see right here? Another support level. Again, what is support? Support is bulls sending the coin to the moon, bears dumping it down, bulls stepping back in and saying, uh-uh, that price point's way too low. Buyers take over and they send it back up. 
we're sitting at $123. And because we, we finished our macro leg set, I would expect that we are going to have a macro retrace. So we're gonna pull out our fib and we're gonna take a look and we're gonna say 118, 105 and $91 are my key reversal points. Then I would go back in history and I would analyze it and go, okay, how much does AXS on average retrace from peak formation? There's a 31% retrace. There's a 20% retrace. Over here after that max massive run up, that was a 40% retrace. Down over here, 45% retrace. And one more right here was a 31% retrace. So between 30 and 40% is the average retrace after a big macro leg set. So we're sitting at 22. If I keep coming down, 105 is 30 and this 91 is 40. That would lead me to believe that we will see AXS coming down slightly more. If I was looking to pack my bags on AXS, which I kind of actually am, I would start to DCA into this coin at about 115 which leads me to my next key point. Just because a coin is supposed to retrace does not mean that it's going to. Just because a indicator gives you a specific reading that 99.99999% of the time it's dead accurate does not mean that this next time is not gonna be that one one thousandth of a percentile. We are using market structure indicators, charting, formations to give us confirmation. That way we can statistically enter trades where we have the highest probability of winning those trades and being successful as a trader. So there's two different types of traders. There's actually like four. Scalpers, they're in trades for minutes. Day traders, they're in trades for hours. Swing traders, they're in trades for days. And hodlers or cruisers, they're in trades for months, years, weeks, days, years, hours, minutes, everything. Hodlers are all over the place, but more so long-term. We are talking about day trading, scalp trading, and swing trading. Scalp traders, more so use indicators and they rely heavily on indicators. Some just trade off just the order books alone and they're looking for those key points to get in, ride something up, get out. I'm teaching you guys more so of a day trader strategy that you can transition into a swing trade. Sometimes when you catch a low and the market turns really bullish, sometimes you just wanna keep riding that one up and you just keep moving your stop loss up. That way if price does dump down, you're taken out in the profits, you got nothing to worry about. But the best part about crypto if we chart this out and we're waiting on those targets to get hit and they don't get hit, guess what? We don't care. Why? Because there's another 3,000 coins at any given time that we can chart out. And I would promise you out of those 3,000, you should find a good trade to take. And it's all about giving yourself the best probability to consistently take money out of the market without ever betting too much, without ever putting too much of your portfolio at risk, and without ever risking more than you can afford to lose. Anytime you take a trade, you should plan on that money disappearing. You just lit it on fire. That's how you need to look at it. So before I over talk it, let's get back to these charts. So now that I have a general idea of where price is going to retrace to, now this is where we split our chart and we pull up RSI. Now I very rarely use RSI on a one day time frame, but I always want to just take a look at the one day. So I'm going to start out on the one day, right? I'm going to see where RSI is. And what I'm looking for is, is RSI above the 50 level on the one day time frame? If it is, and it's just now breaking above that on the one day, man, we could be in for a major rally on AXS. Now I'm gonna jump over onto a four hour. And what am I seeing over here on a four hour? I saw us, we just double topped right here. So I can see that bearish divergence. So we're on a four hour time frame, and we can easily, easily see this bearish divergence right here. But over on the left hand side, I'm still on the three hour. So let's turn this over to a four hour and see if it still looks the same. Should, and it does. Now you're seeing those charts. Let's pause this for a sec. Again, let's see who's watching this video, who's been paying attention, who's taken my entire digital course. What am I looking at here on the charts? Bearish divergence. We see RSI, double top, and put in equal highs, but what was price doing? Price putting in drastically lower highs. Momentum was going up, momentum hit a peak, and price was still coming down. So momentum was going up, price is still coming down, hidden bearish continuation divergence letting you guys know that that was probably a pump up but it's going to be followed by a continuation back to the downside let's see if this is accurate another key fact to keep in mind is just because you see bearish divergence on a chart doesn't always mean that it's going to reverse price and it doesn't tell you how far price is going to come down but we've seen this spike up here once that peak peaked out and by peaked out i meant 
candle printed, next candle started, you see that that's a peak over there. You can easily see this double high. You can easily see this double top over here. Again, I strongly suggest if you have not saw my RSI cheat sheet or my RSI tutorial, please go watch it because there's so much good information. But now we kind of got an idea of the market, right? We have some key support levels. We have our three key retrace targets. Now we're on a four hour. Now let's jump onto the one hour. Now the one hour chart is where I make a lot of my long decisions. I look at a one hour chart. I look at market structure. I look for key retrace targets. I see that I'm still putting in lower highs, lower highs, lower highs over here on RSI. What are we doing over here on RSI? I can see this double top over here again. And if you look closely, you'll see the bearish divergence here as well on the one hour. You had price putting in higher highs, but over here on RSI, you had RSI putting in equal highs, also bearish divergence. Now, when I get onto a one hour, my rule of thumb is if we are below the 60 and above the 40, I'm not taking any trades, period. Because there's just too much room for the market to move and especially if I dial that in, and I guess in the one hour, we can tighten that up a little bit. If I'm between 45 and 55 on the one hour time frame, I don't want to take a trade because there's just too much room for error. There's too much room for question. You can go up because the bots aren't ready to short it and you can go down because the bots aren't ready to long it. So what I love to do is kind of take a look at the one hour, get an idea of the whole market. And then I really jump onto a five minute. That is where I'm looking to quote unquote, catch the falling knife. What do I mean when I say catch the falling knife? I mean, there's going to only be so many times where RSI gets down below that 30 level. And those are the holy grail of trades. Anytime you see RSI getting below the 30 level, it doesn't necessarily mean that it's time to take a trade, but it does mean that you should seriously start looking for bearish and bullish divergence, obviously bullish when you're down at below the 30. So now I'm just going to kind of go back in history and I'm going to look and say, okay, when was the last time I seen AXS get down below that 30 level. And it was down here when it was at a price point of 120. And you can probably see it, see it clear as day right here. What do we see right here on RSI? RSI putting in double bottoms. And what do we see over here on price? Price starting to put in higher lows. Now, this is not my favorite type of bullish divergence, but nonetheless, you're below the 30. You see price putting in bullish divergence. You see price putting in higher highs. You see RSI double bottoming at this level. I mean, had I saw this, I don't care if I didn't plan to trade this week or not, I would have taken that trade because that's how you get into these trades at absolute bottom. Now, just how I looked at this on Axie, I don't have to take a trade. We can go over here and see where the next time where it came down at. Again, it broke down below that 30 level. And where was RSI at? Oh, I can see it right here, clear as day too. You can see it again here price putting in higher lows boom and what's rsi doing rsi was still drastically putting in lower lows so you have price putting in higher lows rsi putting in drastically lower lows breaks below the 30 we would have taken that long at 123. now granted this is where it comes did you take profits if you didn't take profits you know you didn't do yourself any good getting in there at 130. Now take a look at this. What do we notice now? See this time price actually came down over here all the way to 120. So $3 less than it did over here. But where's RSI at? RSI is all the way above 41. So this is where you got to be patient. You got to wait for the right trades. And eventually you will see AXS RSI come down here. Now it might be AXS gets up to 160 and then starts to retrace down to 125 or 135, 140. And then finally RSI, or it might run up to 190. And then when it hits 190, it might run all the way back down to 140. And you will eventually get a point where you're going to get the holy grail of entries. And that's what it's all about, guys. It's all about just waiting for the trades that you want, not taking trades just to take them. And when you see that bullish divergence print, you need to be confident that you can enter those trades. And just to, you know, save face, when you're at those levels and RSI is down here, you should be able to take these trades with a half percent or a 1% stop loss, no problem. And what happens if you get wicked out, you re-enter and you re-enter because the second it starts to run, you're going to have the opportunity to make such massive gains. For example, that would have been a 20%, 18% gain in about nine hours. The other one was a 7% gain in seven hours, but you would have been able to get 6% in a few hours out of that trade. 
And the cool part about this, now the cool part about this is if you get a good understanding of how the game is actually played, when RSI readings are where they're at on the daily time frame, at that level where price can still really skyrocket up, if you get good enough and you understand like how the game is actually played, or you're not trying to just take money out of the market, this is where I'll actually enter these trades at these bottom fallen prices, and I'll turn them into swing trades. So this is one of those things where I can turn trades into swing trades. And a good way to actually turn a day trade into a swing trade is especially if you get into one of the coins when it runs and it starts really ripping, you get up say 50%. Anytime you get up as a day trader or a swing trader on a trade that runs up 50%, if you don't take 50% out, you're crazy. You take 50% out, now everything else is left is profit. So if you can actually swing the day trade into a, a swing trade and catch a coin like Shiba or catch a coin like Solana or Cardano where these coins run up and go up 150, 200%, that's the key. But as a beginner, I strongly suggest just taking profits. You get in a trade, you have the time you enter it, you need to have a key target level of where you want to take those profits at. Depending on the setup, depending on RSI, you need to be able to read those charts. And when your indicators tell you to take a take profit, or you pull out your fib and you hit a key fib level, you take profits, you don't even think about it. You don't look back to see how much more you could have made. That'll get you wrecked. I've been there, I've done that, I got wrecked many a times, guys. So this is legit my crypto trading strategy. This is how I've been extremely, extremely successful as a crypto trader. This is the same strategy you guys watch me use every day. Every time we live stream, we're actually day trading. This is literally what I'm looking for. The sooner you can come to terms with the fact that you don't need to take a trade, guys. If I can teach you guys one thing, it's patience. Just wait. If AXS doesn't give you the trade set up, look for the next one. And if you don't get a trade today, that's the best thing you could ever do. Don't take a trade. Force yourself to chart out coins and play with paper money for two weeks straight. If you can show up at the charts and you can trade for two weeks every single day and actually gain money and actually add money to a play portfolio, you have what it takes to be a good crypto trader. If you can't paper trade for two weeks and be profitable at the end of those two weeks, if you can't do it with play money, you're never going to be able to do it with real money. And what Bybit Testnet does, and it's one of the main reasons why I love promoting for Bybit, because as a new crypto trader the best thing you can do is practice the worst thing you can do trade on a coin trade on an exchange like kucoin even binance every time somebody switched to bybit it's about two weeks and they're like oh my gosh man i cannot believe i traded on bybit kucoin bittrex bitfinex kraken ftx they all say the same thing i can't tell you the amount of times i've been wicked out and i didn't even see the charts hit my target it's wild guys I, you guys know me i'd talk it up bybit up all day after this, I have an interview with Bybit, with their team. They're gonna show us all around BiFi, Bybit Learn, what BitDAO is all about. And hopefully, they're gonna get me that discount code for you guys so you guys can get some special bonuses over there on Bybit just for signing up with my affiliate link. Shout out to the squad, love you guys. Can't wait to see you guys in the next video and I hope you guys are crushing it. If you guys are watching this, this live stream is going to be running the second I launch my digital course. I'm cutting out all these intros and outros and the videos are gonna be running on a continuous loop on a live stream. So that way I wanna help as many people as I can. And the only way I can do that is if you guys hit that like button, hit that subscribe button for me. I'm giving this digital course away 100% for free and it's for you guys to say thank you for everybody that goes out of their way to hit that like button, hit that subscribe button. I wanna give you guys the opportunity to become successful traders without having to pay anybody. I wanted to make the best crypto trading digital course I could 100% for free. So anytime any of these other guys talk about a digital course or talk about another YouTuber, you guys are like, nah, Ryan Matt has been giving us this shit for free and we don't need to spend any money on any other gurus because literally this is all they are teaching you. You don't need to be in a pump group. You don't need to be in a signals group. Those things are scams and garbage, guys. If you can read these charts, I don't need anybody else to tell me a signal of a buy signal, right? I don't want to be involved in a pump because then I have to constantly be worried about when I need to take profits. I wanna be able to look at a chart, read those charts, set up some indicators, and go as far as turning on alerts. So the next video I'm actually gonna make is on alerts and kind of just do another Bitcoin trading strategy video, but alerts are huge and I haven't said anything about them before, so I need to make a video on that now that I just thought about it, but alerts are great. They're your best friend. If you're busy at work and you can at least get alerts on your phone so you can kind of stay up to date on the market, and that's why I say you need a certain amount of time to be a crypto trader because you can't just be taking trades. And a lot of times you need to manage those trades. So if you don't have the ability to get to your phone and manage them, you need to make sure that you're trading with stop losses and take profits. Love you guys. See you guys in the next video. Peace.